So in Panama, when you want to send letters and parcels domestically, there isn't a national post service that's used like there is in most countries. Correos Panama is the national post service here. However, they don't deliver to your door. You have to go and collect. Not everybody uses it or likes it. They tend to get mixed reviews and the majority of people tend to rely on private services like the one I'm about to show you. Uh, what most people do here is use a company like Uno Express and the best thing to do is ask the person you're going to send the parcel or the letter to what service is convenient for them because they might not have an office uh, of the, the service you choose uh, near to them. So it's always best to check with them first and this particular person uh, like many, almost everyone in Panama seems to like uh, Uno Express. So I'm going to take the parcel inside and see how much it costs and then uh, I'll give you an update afterwards. I'm going to collect a parcel first and in that parcel is the payment for the book that I'm going to send the same person. I've sold it on Facebook. You might wonder how people sell things online and send them and receive payment. This is one way, they send you the cash first and then you send. If you're selling on Facebook, you always need to receive the cash first before you send the item. If you're a buyer and uh, you want to take the risk, the risk is all yours. I've never done it and I don't recommend doing it. I've just collected my parcel, took one minute and all I had to do was just sign a paper and uh, to send the parcel, which was just over uh, 1.4 kilos, around one and a half kilos, uh, it cost me $7.50 all inclusive. And I just had to show my ID, they noted my ID number and uh, gave me a, a, a ticket uh, and a receipt. Uh, it's interesting to note here that the addresses in Panama aren't like the normal addresses that you have in the rest of, of many countries let's say um, for example the address I had to send to was just a person's name and uh, then the name of a city and uh, then a number and uh, I think that was their cell number so uh, it's really uh, not such an elaborate uh, address system that they use here uh, it's just going to go to that office they're going to come and pick it up and I didn't even need to know the ID uh, number of the other person just their name so you need to make sure you get the name of the other person correct otherwise they're not going to uh, be able to collect it and uh, that's that's a problem but apart from getting their name absolutely correct so they can show their ID the other side uh, that's it really if you're sending it to the office if you're getting it forwarded to their exact address that's an additional charge and it's offered in some places and not others and uh, for that you'll need uh, an address that works in Panama so for example it could be the blue house next to mini supermarket Brenda um, off Avenue uh, Esmeralda uh, in Libice. So it really depends, it's just how you can describe the address as specific as possible and then you need to put someone's WhatsApp number on there because everybody uses WhatsApp in Panama um, or their normal phone number uh, too but uh, really everybody uses WhatsApp as a default. Uh, I get away without using it but uh, that's a whole other story. Uh, you really need it normally day to day in, in Panama unless you want to go to quite a lot of effort not to use WhatsApp. So those are the things you need if you're going to send things domestically in Panama and I hope this video has been useful to you. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe because there's lots more I can show you about Panama. I'm going to do videos on all kinds of subjects. That's why the, the, the channel is called Everything Panama.